Hi everyone, I'm Ryson Sinek, and um, I played something uh, very strange this time around. Those of you who watched my Legendary review might remember me referring to the outlandish plot, but really calling that game overly madcap might have been a little bit heavy-handed, because really, it can't even hold a candle to the cocktail of strangeness that is this game. This may be one of the more commonly heard of games I've covered so far, but it seems only in name. People have heard the name Deadly Premonition, but few people have actually played the game. This game is sort of a genre blend. It's a bit too wacky to be called a full horror game, but a little too eerie to be called a comedy story. It also is primarily a detective story. The game is a finely blended mix of oddities and head-tilting strangeness that really must be experienced. The game starts with a little framing device. A story being told to a small girl by an old man in the shadows. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, I have a message for my cousin. Um, uh, so, everyone else, you can just go. This, this isn't for you. It's, it's fine. They gone? Okay. Um, hi. I, I, I hope you've been enjoying my little show. Uh, just so you know, this game... This game is not for kids. Like at all. It's kind of graphic and kind of scary. So, while I won't be showing it in any sort of detail, not, not really explicit or anything, uh, just, you probably shouldn't go seeking this game out. Um, your parents would probably get really mad at me if you did that, so, uh, not till you're older, and then, maybe. Um, okay, that's all. Uh, everyone else? You can come back now. You back? Okay, hi! No, that, that was it. Now that everyone's back, we can officially jump right into the story, because really, I can't think of anywhere else to start with this game. Our story proper starts with this man, who has my favorite way of introducing himself I've ever seen in a video game protagonist. FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. So we start with York, and he is driving to a small town somewhere in the United States Northwest where a murder occurred. And then the woman was... Why is this story being told to a child? Anyway, here we are also introduced to Zack. Don't you agree, Zack? Did you catch that? That was Zack. Now, I'll admit, I might not be the most qualified person to talk about schizophrenia, but I like how it was depicted here. It isn't treated as a negative or something that York needs to fix, it's just an aspect of his character. So on his way to the town of Greenvale, York is run off the road by a man in a raincoat. He swerves to avoid the raincoated man and... <coughs> almost hits some squirrels bringing you to the start of the gameplay. The gameplay is an over-the-shoulder third-person shooter. My music guy said the game looked like a blend of Metal Gear Solid and Resident Evil. And while I would be hard-pressed to say that's inaccurate, it is by far stranger than those two put together. For instance, these are the enemies. Yeah. No. After proceeding through the action stage, the things the game refers to as Otherworld stages, you come across the villain, who may or may not actually be there. I've beaten the game, and honestly, I'm a little fuzzy on the details. You run into the villain, the raincoat killer, and then you have to deal with a brief quick time event. And then... Uh, um... Bye. From there, you encounter your primary supporting cast, the Deputy Sheriff, Emily Wyatt, and the Sheriff, George Woodman. As the case proceeds, you're introduced to other members of the town, like the main doctor, the mechanic, the elderly hotel owner, the sheriff's assistant, the old man who owns most of the land in the town, the general store owners, and their creepy twin children who found the murdered woman. It's a fairly varied cast with a lot of interesting characters, but I have very little information on them, honestly. I suspect you can get more information on these people by participating in the many side missions that were available throughout the game, but for the sake of this review, I did not participate in most of them. 
I will probably go back at some point and go through all the side missions, just to learn a little more about this game and the characters in it. Now, I've been jumping back and forth between story and gameplay, but I should probably go into some detail in the gameplay just to avoid giving away too much about the story. Your controls are a little stiff. York cannot move and shoot. He has to take time raising his weapon to aim, and cannot walk around if he is aiming, but can move around if he is using a melee weapon. If these controls seem stiff and unnatural, it's because they kind of are. Strange as it sounds, though, the unusual controls fit. Everything about this game is kind of off, from the way the characters move and interact, to the voice acting, to the way the enemies move. These things are just uncanny enough. Moving around is clunky, but not so bad it's ungodly slow. You also have a run button and a hold your breath button. Because ghosts can't see you if you hold your breath. When you get down to it though, the other world gameplay is not really what this game is about. It's much more about finding clues to the murder and trying to prevent things from getting any worse. Visually, this game is just as strange as everything else, but for the most part it works. However, there are a few things that one needs to keep in mind. Primarily that this game is a few years old. The visuals can be a little strange looking sometimes. While the environments look decent aesthetically, sometimes they're not so great graphically. So while the environments do look good and don't clash with each other, sometimes the way the trees or ground looks can be a little flat. So most of the aspects of this game, not just the visual aspects, are definitely uncanny. But not so strange that you just laugh at them. However, there is an exception to that. And that's the facial expressions. Yeah, neutral facial expressions, they work just fine, but when you start getting into things like, oh, say, laughter. Surprise. Smugness. Sound-wise, this game is very clever. I'm guessing some people would criticize Deadly Premonition for poor voice acting, but I would say that's a little unfair. It's certainly strange voice acting, but I'm not sure I would call it bad. What I want to know is if it sounds this way because the director's Japanese and that was just the direction he was giving, or if it sounds this way because he knows how to make English sound just strange enough and he's doing this on purpose kind of inclined to believe the latter. Musically, the game fits the tone of the scenes. Funny scenes have the comic relief music, the intense scenes have a more intense sound to them, and the relaxing scenes have a more relaxed track. Now it's time for our good, bad, strange, and bland. Actually, we're going to be doing this in a slightly different order, and we're going to be doing bad last. The good is the story. The story is the main focus here, and is by far the most compelling thing that Deadly Premonition has to offer. The characters and unfolding plot draw you in with the mystery, and keep you just baffled enough that you hope desperately that more will be explained. Though some things will not be adequately explained. I'm still not sure if the other world is the real life, or if it's just fantasy. But that's the beauty of a proper mystery, isn't it? Keeping you just confused enough? Granted, they usually do this with twists and turns in the narrative, and not by being really, really weird all the time. Now for the strange. And how do you narrow down one strange thing in this menagerie of the bizarre? Really easily, it turns out. If you've ever seen the game Gestosta and wondered what it would be like to drive a car like that, Deadly Premonition knows, and is more than willing to teach you. The cars in this game drive as if gravity and friction are really more recommendations. Really, it's no surprise that York flew off the road at the start of the story. If this is how he drives, it's some sort of miracle it didn't happen sooner. The bland is the gameplay, right around the middle of the game. Some of the other world sections get a little... well, they drag. Sometimes I felt like I was just slogging through the gameplay to get to the far more interesting story. Around the end, the gameplay starts to pick back up again, and I am very thankful for that. So, just so you know that when the gameplay starts to drag, it will pick back up again and give you a satisfying ending. And now... man oh man. Now we have the bad, and that is... 
This is the absolute worst PC port I've ever played in my life. I've heard people complain about the Dark Souls PC port, but at least that game is stable. At least you can play it. Deadly Premonition crashed on me so often that I... <laughs> well, let's just say it happened a lot. There are very few ways to actually fix this, but there are ways to make it so that it doesn't set you back too far. For one, turn on autosaving. It isn't much, but it helps. Also, whenever you see a save point, which in this game are phones, save. If you have driven to a location, save. Made it through a cutscene? Oh hey look over there, a phone! Better save. There are pay phones that cost a dollar. Spend the dollar. This game gives out money like it's candy. You are unlikely to miss the few dollars that it will cost you to save. While the instability isn't the only problem with the port, it is the biggest. There are other things like, be careful with controller remapping, because too much will make it so you cannot use your weapon. Oh, and I highly recommend using a gamepad, as the game was designed with that in mind. And as strange as driving is with a gamepad, I can't even imagine what it would be like with a keyboard and mouse. Now for the big question, do I recommend this game? I do, if you are willing to deal with the port. I finished this game with a 24 hour playtime, and there are quite a few hours that were lost trying to get the game to work, so be aware of these things. Oh, and the strangeness, but really that should be obvious at this point. If you're not willing to deal with the port, I recommend hunting down the console version of the game, as there are copies of it for the Xbox 360 and the PS3, for not much more than the PC version. Deadly Premonition Director's Cut is available on Gamersgate and Steam for $24.99. I recommend the Steam version since, as of this recording, it is more up to date. <sighs> well, till next time, I'm Rice and Sinek, and I. Hi! <laughs>